Good morning. All right, KU one. Okay. It was a great game, but you know, as uh, as you saw in the paper that uh, I, I, I think it was Oklahoma State was coming after Bill Self, and I thought, don't do the same thing to these KU people that you did to Illinois. So, but he didn't. No sermon notes today, which uh, very rarely happens, but uh, I need to share my heart with you, something that changed my life years ago, and so I'm just going to preach at you today from uh, John chapter 9, the first 11 verses. Uh, when I've shared with you a few stories about when our handicapped daughter was born, but there was something that happened in our lives after that that uh, this passage was used by my pastor in the church that I grew up in on the south side of Chicago. And it made an impact on my life. And hopefully today it will make an impact on yours. So uh, here we go. We couldn't understand why God would choose Cheryl and I to have a severely handicapped daughter. Could not understand why. We had, up until then, we, we lived like the all-American life. Uh, she was born and raised in the Chicago suburbs, and uh, that's where we met, and, and everything went well, and then our daughter changed our uh, whole life. But we couldn't understand why God would would change our life. Of course, we see it now. But at that time, we couldn't understand why. Why us? And, and until one day, during, during all of the struggling, uh, our pastor at that time called us into his office and he said, now, now we, were, we were fairly new Christians, and, and he said, well, come into my office and has anybody ever told you about or read to you John chapter 9? And we said, no. So, if uh, you want to turn there, and it's a very, very familiar story, but it made such an impact on us. So, here, let me just set the scene here. Jesus is in Jerusalem for the Feast of the Tabernacles, harvesting the, uh, which is the harvest of the grapes and the olives. And He's taught many things in the temple in uh, chapter 8. He has said that He is Indeed, the truth, and 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 even, and he even questions the uh, people. Why don't you believe in me? Why don't you even believe in me? In fact, they even say, you know what, you you've got a demon. Now here they are telling Jesus Christ the Savior that you know what the things you're saying, you must have a demon in you. Can you believe that? Can you believe the gall of people to say that? So uh, this is kind of what's happening in chapter 8. But let me just pick it up in chapter 9, the beginning. So as they called him a demon, and then they, uh, they, uh, they tried to hurt him, they tried to stone him, they picked up stones, and Jesus got out of there. Okay, He left. John chapter 9. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, if Cheryl was to be up here, she would tell you that the day Melissa was born, she had gone through so many problems with her birth that we really didn't get to see her after she was born. I don't know whether I told you a story, but when, when uh, they were finally able to get Melissa out of Cheryl, she, was, she, she wasn't blue, she was purple. Her whole body was purple. And a wonderful anesthesiologist, God, a godly man back home, took her in his arms and took her over and, and, and we could just hear him say, Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. 
And finally, I, I don't know how long, but finally I heard Melissa cry or something. But we didn't get to see her after that because they started running tests and, and stuff. And, and, if, and, and, and those of, in the medical field, uh, she had an APCAR score of zero, which is not good. So when they brought her to Cheryl that night, as Cheryl held her in her arms, she knew there was something different. There was something wrong. Now here's Jesus. Was it the text say in the very first verse, as he's passing by, he notices, he says that there he came across, he saw a man who had been born blind. Cheryl knew that something was different about Melissa. And as we came to learn over time, that God makes people exactly the way He wants. He does. And it was, I do believe, that God allowed all the circumstances in that delivery room that day that Melissa would be exactly the way He wanted her to be. As tough as that is to say. So here he is. Now, now this man has been born blind. And if, now, with my daughter, if my daughter was to be sitting here in one of these chairs, and you walked in, you would not notice anything that was wrong with her. She would look like you and I just sitting there. But the minute she would move, or the minute she would look at somebody, or the minute she would try and talk because she, she, she really can't talk, or if she got up and tried to walk, you would notice right away something's wrong with her. Something's different. Okay? I don't want to say wrong because... Do you know God doesn't make... You've heard this. God doesn't make any junk. Okay? He doesn't. Doesn't make any... Mistakes, even though you know, I heard uh, if uh, uh, if some of you have, have heard David Ring sometime preach, and I've had the, I've had the honor of meeting him, and he's unbelievable, and and in his cerebral palsy voice, he'll say, you know, God doesn't make no junk, and he doesn't. So here, if she was in here, just sitting here, you would think that there was absolutely nothing wrong with her. But yet the minute she would move, you would, you would see that she was different. And that's what Cheryl saw that night as, she, at, as they finally brought her up to our room. Now, so Jesus passes by this guy who's blind. And right away, the disciples say, why is he like this? I'm paraphrasing it now. But, but if you see in your text, he says, And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? And I can't tell you the days and the nights that I spent in guilt thinking that my daughter was born the way she was because of something I did or hadn't done. That guilt just wrecked my heart for years. You know, for years I prayed that my daughter would be would somehow miraculous, miraculously God would just snap His fingers and that she would be completely normal. But yet, the more and more I kind of learned of what the Bible said, what's really normal? I think my daughter's more normal than me. You know, because I don't know. You know what? She just needs love. New pair of jeans? She could care less. New car? She could care less. Candy? Now that she'll want. <laughs> but I mean, she doesn't require anything more than, you know what she loves most? To sit on the couch with her sisters and watch a movie. And she likes to lay across all of them. All across their uh, laps. 
But that's all she requires. Now, now think about that. Compared to what we require, the selfishness, the pride that we suffer in our hearts, you know what? I don't know. I think she's more godly than me. But now Jesus comes across this guy and right away his disciples say, hey, there's got to be a reason why this guy's like this. It's got to be sin. Now, if you go back to the Old Testament, they did attribute that quite a bit to, a per, to a per, something happening in, in somebody's life like that because of sin. But we knew, we knew that there was something different about our daughter. We knew it. And you would know it too if she was to move or stand up or try and talk. But these guys say, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? And Jesus answered, verse 3, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. And as, as my pastor said that to us, it was like all of a sudden the light went on. I said, oh yeah! It's like the guilt was completely taken away from me. She's that way because God made, God allowed her to be that way. It wasn't about anything that I did or didn't do or anything, any gross sin in my life or anything like that. And I was just, oh, it was like the burden because I blamed myself for years. She was born in 83. I did not become a believer until August of 1991. That's how long it took me. And this passage, God's Word just set me free from that. And I was so thankful as Pastor Andrew read that. It was like, oh! You mean to tell me she's this way because so God can work through here? And and he said, yeah! Yeah! Now, I wasn't saved at that time. But all of a sudden, it started to click. That God put her on this earth to change me. Oh. Who sinned? That's what they asked Jesus. Who sinned? Not, why is, why is this guy like that? And right away, who sinned? His parents? Or him. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. No, you're, you don't get it. It's so God can be revealed through him. And it ended up in my life. You got saved first. Two years before me, in 1989, she got saved. 91 was me. And then her sister and my, and my mother and my father the ripple effect from our daughter has, has, just, has just gone through both of our families. The ripple effect of our daughter at HeartSpring here in Wichita, Kansas. Her pictures all over their brochures and the stuff at school. It's unbelievable. But right away these guys would say, Whoa, who sinned? Come on now. There's got to be something in this guy's background or his parents that he was born this way. But Jesus said no. Verse 4. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Let me... Oh, this is so good. This is so good. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground, made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is is this not he who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He's like him. 
He said, I am He. Therefore they said to Him, How were your eyes opened? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received sight. His life changed because of Jesus. And I know there's got to be testimonies all over this room about how your life was changed when you came to know Jesus. And those of you who have been Christians your whole life, God bless you, but i got a late start. Okay? I was 33. I know, 33. I'm still good looking and humble, right? But people laugh when I say that. But do you know that Jesus Christ is still in the business of changing lives? Do you know that? But there's a, there's a bigger question here. Not only, not only, oh, how can I put this, Lord? Help me. Not only did God's Word free me for, from that guilt, but God changed my life so much as, can you tell I love to preach for Him? But He's still in the business of, of, of molding me into His image and still in the business of changing people's lives. Okay? Now, I, I want you to see that. And I want you to remember what I said, that when they brought my daughter to Cheryl that night after doing all the tests, she could see that something was different about her. Okay, here we go. This is where Pastor Told blows up. The question is, if Cheryl could see something was different in our daughter, what can people see that's different in you? Just ask him. Let me make it more corporately. This man's life was changed when, when Jesus gave him his sight, was, was he not? And he had no trouble going around telling people, hey, who did this to you? This guy named Jesus. Really? Yeah. You know what people are saying? Nah, that can't be him. Who was? But that ain't him. He said, yeah, it's me. No, got to be somebody else. Got to be somebody else. He said, no, it's me. It's me. This happened to me. The question on the floor still stands. When Jesus passed by this blind man, he knew that he was blind. Why? You can tell. You can tell with a handicapped person. Like I said, remember what I told you? If my daughter was sitting right here and she tried to move or speak, you would see something was different. The question on the floor still stands. What do people see that's different in you? I don't see nobody smiling. More corporately, what do they see in Calvary Bible that makes it different than anybody else? Just ask him. Are they going to see Christ? Oh, please say yes. But do you see my point here? They could tell this man was blind. You can tell. You can tell when somebody's handicapped or somebody's blind. You know, they're going to struggle in doing certain things. If you ever get a chance to meet my daughter, you will see that one of us, one of us, always has to hang on to her. We do. Why? She needs the help. But the question still stands. Now, they saw something was different in this blind man. Is there something different in you that would attract people? Why? Because people are going up to this blind man now and saying, Whoa, what? you can't be the same guy. You've got to be kidding me. He says, No, I am. It's me. The one who was born blind. You know what he did? I'm reading in through the text now. Yeah, he puts the... Phew, He said, go wash. That's it. And Jesus was glorified through that because Jesus said, this man was born blind so God could be revealed through him. God was revealed 
through to us through my daughter. But the question still stands. What do people see in you that's different? Because if you're much like what's outside these walls, can I tell you something? You ain't that much different. But people got to know that when they see you, what is it about you? Your joy. Why? Because people should see in Christians, without me going into last week's sermon, about your speech, about the way you conduct yourself, they need to see joy. You know what? We live in an unjoyful world out there. You know? Just listen to the news. You know when the news comes on lately, you know what I do? Turn it off. I am sick and tired of hearing about Barack Obama, John McCain, Hillary Clinton, and everything else. I wish the election was tomorrow. God bless them. God bless them. But I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the press picking apart everything everybody says. I'm tired of it. But the Church of Jesus Christ must always be different from the world out there. Especially by the way we love people. So hey, have you answered that question yet? What do people see in you that's different? Because obviously Jesus saw something and, and he knew of what was going on in this man's life. And the blind man, had he had no problem No problem whatsoever explaining the change in his life. But what about you? When's the last time you shared your testimony with somebody? I had a co-worker years ago, a big, big old, big old guy, and uh, he was uh, he was working with us, and we were talking, and uh, I just started telling him about my life, about how God changed my life, and you know what he said? And God gets all the glory for this. You know what he said to me? He said. Man, I knew there was something different about you. And I still had my teeth in. He said, I knew there was something different about you. Praise God. So what do they see in you? Do they see something different or do they see the same old thing? Do they see something in this church that's different or do they see the same old thing? That's a question only you can answer between you and your Lord. So as we noticed something was wrong with our daughter, the Scripture was opened up to us and said, that's it. God allowed her to be handicapped so His power, His glory, His love could be revealed through her to many people. I can't tell you how many lives my daughter has touched in, in different parts of the world as I have shared her story. And now this blind man, Jesus, worked through him. And he regained his sight so God would be glorified. So I just want to leave you with that final question one more time. What do people see that's different in you? Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do love you. Lord, I thank you for this scripture that you you literally changed my life overnight with this part of how you use the people that this world often wants to discard and get rid of. But you used and keep using my daughter for your glory. And Lord, I can't thank you enough for how you changed my life by using her. Lord, help the people that come into contact with us to see something different in our lives. And may they see you and only you. I can remember 
it uh, being said that I must decrease so he can increase. Lord, may that be ever present in our lives. We love you. We give you all the honor and all the praise. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen.